That's right. Yes, this is Let's Talk Colin Radio, where, uh, I don't know, what? <laughs> <laughs> where we, uh, where we uh, talk about the root causes of the important issues of the day. This On The Air Community Forum believes your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views without judgment. Please join our conversation today by calling 415-663-8492 or you can tweet us at, at Let's Talk on KWMR. And your hosts today are... Hello. Stephen Hurwitz. Hi, Shelley. Shelley Rock. Hi there, Stephen and Paul. And Paul Raffel. <laughs> and uh, what, uh, call us, please, 415-663-8492. And when you hear me, uh, when you... Um, Hear a little noise. That's me putting you in the system. Just hang on until I say you're on the air, and then be prepared to turn down your radio. Give us your first name, and please watch, watch your language. language. Keep your language clean, no matter how passionate you may be about the subject at hand, which is climate change. Climate change. I thought and, we were uh, oh yeah, I thought it was global warming, but we've changed that to climate change. Climate change, climate change. I remember uh, we were standing somewhere with signs about climate change and a cyclist went by and said, "Hey man, it's global warming." And I well, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so we're just talking about that today, and we'd like to hear your views on it. Well, with all the the heat wave that we just went through, and the uh, intense hurricanes that are happening right now, with another one coming up, Florida, Category five, five. I think it's still Category five. It just went over the top of Haiti. Poor Haiti gets it again, and uh, Dominican Republic heading for somewhere like the Florida Keys, perhaps. And uh, so, what are the questions today? Well, I was thinking of, uh, really, I was thinking about why do people deny it? Ah. You know, it's... You know, I think that what they, they talk convince themselves that this is just a natural way that the earth is unfolding, you know, mm -hmm. that, that this is just the way nature is, and that trying to attribute it to some other forces doesn't make sense to them. Right. Well, and also, uh, yes, I mean, we all know about the cycles, the ice ages that have been, that have happened and the warming and the cooling of the earth. Right. Uh, the trouble is that in the past 150 years, uh, greenhouse gases have gone sort of vertically on the graph instead of this sort of gradual rise since the ice age. The earth has been warming for, what, 7,000 years now, something like that? Until With the old blip 1950s, if the, you look at the graph, then it starts yeah. heading straight up. And then it's... And uh, anybody know where it is right now? Parts per million? Ha, ha, ha. Uh, Maybe no, a caller could call in. No, but, you know, I'd like to address that subject just a little bit more. Yeah. I did some research here. I was saying to myself, well, what is this business about deniability, you know? Mm. And it really came up to one thing, and that is that uh, we have so much invested into the, uh, fossil fuels that to deny that fossil fuels uh, have a major uh, part in global warming is to say – uh, if you admit it, it's to say that we have to make some drastic changes and we have to do them right now. And uh, something really funny uh, that I uh, pulled up, the Chamber of Commerce, who we know is hmm. very conservative, uh, heavy funders of GOP candidates, hmm. um, he said, should world 
scientists turn out to be right and the planet heats up, the chamber advised, populations can acclimatize to warmer climates via a range of behavioral, physiological, and technological oh, <laughs> adaptations. Well, of course. Which That's is true. what they're working so if they're on. So right, yeah. we'll all just... That's true. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, Clash her into the mic a little bit. All right. Um, How's that sound? Uh, uh, that's good. Okay. Um, it's true, of course, that we do acclimatize. Oh, that's our great success as a species, right? I mean, we're everywhere. But, you know, <laughs> at some point, there's... Yeah. Yeah. When it's taken as an excuse not to do... to not stop doing the things that are actually causing... Uh, on a global scale, I mean, this is the first time ever there's been a species that has done this on a global scale, except maybe... Hmm, except maybe plankton or, you know, the ones that created the atmosphere to begin with, plants and single-celled animals dying and reproducing. And You're going way too mm, bad for me. Wow. Way, way too far well, the formation me. of the atmosphere was done by uh, animals and, uh, and uh, plants, right? Anyway, so here's a, well, so here's a, a, a point of view from the National Review, or always known as a fair-minded publication. Uh, Uh, So they're saying that framing the climate debate as one between noble keepers of the scientific flame and people akin to Nazis gave the former group license to say almost anything. So they say, yes, there were people on the right who used to say that the climate is not changing. Uh, Now they are softening their stance. They're saying now, this is National Review, which is a right-wing magazine, used to be, uh, what's his name? Buckley. Um, Where's William Buckley now that we really need him? uh, Where he needs (laughs) to be. Uh, So it says, often politicians and pundits targeted with the denier label did deserve blame. Ignoring the best available scientific research was irresponsible or dishonest. Uh, it was their arguments were usually from a fear that acknowledging the scientific basis of climate change would mean accepting radical and here's the word costly responses right um, so now what's happened is uh, he's saying that even Scott Pruitt, who is now head of the EPA, oh boy, and, that, and he is widely called a climate denier, climate change denier, and uh, Bernie Sanders at the hearing had a good go at him trying to get him to say that he didn't believe in climate change. He actually said uh, the climate is changing and human activity contributes to that in some manner. Mm. Mm. And then... Uh, he said the ability to measure with precision precision the degree of human activity's impact on the climate is subject to more debate. The climbing act, climate is changing. Human activity impacts that. So now the National Review, the conservative party wing here, uh, says that that leaves the people who call everyone who are questioning what we need to do in policy about climate change, they they just call them blanket climate change deniers, as they used to be able to do. But now they're saying that even these guys, the ones we call climate change deniers, who are in uh, in charge of... uh, They're they're, uh, in charge of departments, right? Uh, That they're just... uh, They're concerned about how much should be devoted to change, to try to slow down climate change. They're not denying it anymore. Mm. Oh, is that right? And the National Review says this has taken the power away from the activists who are, that's us, uh, uh, it's taken away their power because that's the only argument they ever had was that, oh, you don't believe in science. And they're saying, these guys are saying, well, they do believe in science. Even Scott Pruitt believes that it is changing. But they He's need to question what the policy way. should be from here on out, right? Well, his policy certainly is, uh, does not uh, reflect the belief in the, that uh, climate change is happening. I mean, he's opened up fossil fuel. Every, every yeah, new yeah, source yeah. of fossil fuels, he's uh, opening up. You know, sure. before we go, on, I just want to recommend to people, I found this Rolling Stones magazine article written in uh, <clears throat> 2012, hmm. not that long ago, but... We're going back to, uh, you know, what is that, five years ago. Mm -hmm. It's called Global Warming, Terrifying New Math. Global Warming's Terrifying New Math. It's by a name of Bill McKibben. Uh Well-known around here. Oh, no kidding. 
And one of the things he said that was interesting back in the, in o twelve was uh, there's not a much more reckless man on the planet than Tillerson. All right. Right. Well, he was Rex Tillerson. Yeah. Uh, ran Exxon, and Exxon was on record back in the, what, 80s? As knowing that the climate was changing. That's right. And knowing that greenhouse gases had a great deal to do with it. And, and they deep yet it. They, they hit it and they kept right. on producing right. instead of doing maybe branching out into other things. Well, you know, like the it, other oil companies have done Shell and BP, for example, they're huge in solar. Is Exxon? I don't know. No, Exxon. they just, uh, no, Shell uh, got rid of their solar program uh, a number of years ago, and BP mm. has done the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, there you go. But Out what, of touch. What he notes is this. Uh, we have five times as much oil and coal and gas on the books as climate scientists think is safe to burn. We'd have to keep 80% of these reserves locked away underground to avoid that fate. There, There's a... That's big oil. There's a very strong incentive. Uh, what I want to know is they're going to go down with the same planet as we are. Yeah, but <laughs> there is Good no point. long-term yeah. plan here, right? There it's is not, no planet B. There's no, uh, there's no long-term plan. Yes, their children, their grandchildren are going to suffer as much, although they're hoping that they'll, well, by that they, time they'll be off on another planet right, or they'll be in a, a pod somewhere. a new home somewhere. Yeah, yeah the big satellite Orbiting the Earth. Please give us a call, 415-663-8492. Let us know. Uh, maybe, you're, uh, maybe you don't think that uh, humans are having an impact on global climate. It seems ridiculous because, you know, how could we possibly do that? I'm certainly not contributing to it. <coughs> well, you, know, you, <laughs> you could say, can we make any difference as an individual? Well, I, mean, I think that's I think that's a an out for a lot of people. It's like, well, just little old me, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut yeah. the ba- bottoms of my cans off, and how is that gonna help? Right. All that all that individual. Mm-hmm. Well, because we did it individually, we created the conditions individually. But I can't stop By driving. Consuming. I'm not gonna stop driving. No. That's the trouble with living in the... Wow. And then, you know, there's the other layer beyond um, the oil industry is um, animal agriculture has been Mm. um, identified as a contributor to climate change. Big ag, yeah. 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 And apparently it's cow belches are worse than cow (laughs) flatulence. (laughs) <laughs> Much more productive of methane than wow. the flatulence is. I like that rude cows. Although the the stock the ponds of manure that they that they collect at these huge places out in the Midwest. Uh, I think you call them uh, lakes, not ponds. Yeah, right. I mean that's uh, that's certainly letting off methane as it all decomposes. Yeah. But um, yeah, cow belches. I'm tired of all this harping upon animals' contribution. Well, and then there's a thing called geoengineering. Ah. What's that? Well, you know, it's it's one of the things that um, people can get laughed at for talking about. It's basically, you know, chemtrails. We yeah, we did a show it, on it mm-hmm. yeah? not long ago. Ah, yeah. Um, there is a website called geoengineeringwatch.org. Mm-hmm. And so people can go there to find out more about it. But I remember when I was in Long Beach, um, I knew a guy that was working in the city, City Hall. And a citizen came in and said, what are you guys going to do about the chemtrails? Mm. You know, you could see them. And and he just laughed at the guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so... uh, I, you know, it's... Well, it's a question. Are they uh, really spraying chemicals or is it uh, just atmospheric conditions? That's what, for example, Dick Dillman, Richard Dillman would say, who's a a very sensible person. I don't know about... I've seen those crisscross trails on certain days and I've seen the way that they maintain and spread and and become... Mm -hmm. So is that someone's, somebody somewhere's answer to... uh, to fighting uh, the greenhouse or to, to fighting, fighting climate it or, change? Or, or Why would they want to increase it? Hello, caller, you're on the air. Well, 
you thought you uh, had heard the last of me. <laughs> Let me no, tell you. State your name, uh, please. What's your name, please? My, my name is Charles. I'm oh. Um, and keep it clean, please. Oh, wow, well, really? Uh, the, um, no, I mean, the, the, the problem with geoengineering, very simply, is that it doesn't reduce carbon. It says everything goes on as normal, but right. we are going to add more chemicals to the world, and those will uh, mean that the chemicals that we're currently adding will not have this terrible effect. And so, yeah, I think geoengineering is really pernicious. I don't know if chemtrails exist or not, but stranger things we have learned to be true in the mm-hmm. fullness of time. So. Yep. Whatever. I mean, it's not something. And creating a shell, creating a, even a reflective shield, you're creating a shell around everything we're doing down here. So, it, yeah. Yeah, it fits into the whole sort of um, uh, economic uh, theory, right? Which is that what you need to do is open up the atmosphere to uh, or the oceans to entrepreneurs, climate entrepreneurs yeah. who are going to make money yeah. by disrupting, you know, whatever the effects of climate change. Uh, it's hideous and it's a terrible idea, and the consequences are, you know, uh, unimaginable. We don't know what's going to happen if these fools uh, uh, get control of, you know, whatever, or are allowed to pump. Uh, uh, sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere or uh, do whatever they want to do with the ocean. So I think right. it's a bad idea. So anybody's yeah. into sort of protests or negative politics, yeah, definitely go go against that. Speaking of, uh, of releases of chemicals into the air, chemical companies have already released a million pounds of extra air pollutants thanks to Hurricane Harvey in Houston, of course, oil capital of the world and or <coughs> the U.S. And uh, all these oil refineries and chemical plants... Uh, where the generators went off and the scrubbers don't work. They're, they're just pumping stuff into the air. So if we can't get Contributing the... to that. That's the, all the question is, how do we deal with these intense storms that we're now getting? Are, well, first, the question is, is, are they really more intense? There always was a Category 5, so this can't be the first Category 5 storms to come ashore, right? Well, let's just take as a see. premise, which I do, that climate change is going to uh, increase the uh, variability of the climate and the frequency with which you get extreme weather events. Okay? Mm. I'm not a scientist. I don't, you know, uh, I don't study it, I, it's, it but I, I accept that, that, you know, that's credible. Uh, the people who I respect uh, seem to accept that, so let's go with it. Yeah. Even if it wasn't Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Well then, but, but then uh, who pays the cost for the remediation? I mean, can we afford to keep having states of emergency like four times a year on this scale? $180 billion in estimated for cleanup after Harvey alone, and here comes Irma. Well, I, I would just say... Can we afford to do that? Even anymore? if climate change, is, climate change wasn't happening, Western civilization, which causes climate change, and mostly it's the machines that we all rely upon to survive and the fuel that goes into those machines, has to radically change. So you can say, mm-hmm. well, climate change is the reason that I'm interested in this, and maybe that's a good motivation. But it's got to change anyway. And thinking about the ways in which it needs to change you know, can lead you to, to a lot of interesting practical things to be done. And yes, let me be the boring person and say, yeah, again, that there are three meetings at Marin Clean Energy down there on Lindaro <laughs> Street uh, in San Rafael. You can go to all three meetings and speak on every uh, issue that comes up. And you could be, uh, the listeners, uh, could be encouraging Marin Clean Energy to do more, to localize their power supply, to get fuel out of it, mm-hmm. um, and uh, uh, to make it low, local and renewable and efficient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That isn't, you know, that, uh, and Marin Clean Energy is doing more and more, you know, that's true, but it won't happen unless people come and put pressure on them and it's something that's local and you're invited you can go where is it oh it's, it's 750 lindaro street it's in downtown san rafael by the highway they have a, a, a general meeting and that's sometimes at the board of supervisors building and then they have technical and executive meetings and those are at their offices so this would be i think uh, their their main monthly meetings at the civic center the two other meetings which the public is also uh free to attend and to speak uh are at um the uh, their offices uh in san rafael but, and i i would say about that the person that invented the law our our former neighbor uh paul fenn did it precisely so that individuals on a human scale 
can influence the way decisions are made about how we use energy and, and what are we going to do about it. You mm. cannot go to Chevron's board meetings. You cannot go to PG&E's board meetings. Even if you could, you would be one voice in this massive corporation with all of its mm. varied interests and its tens of thousands of employees, et cetera, et cetera. But you can have a voice locally, and you can do significant things on a local level. One of the things that causes despair is people say, well, you know, I got my EV and I recycle, but what does that mean? So the Precisely. of doing things on a, a community scale is that you have a greater impact, and that's a mm. part of it, too. And if we could create an example of uh, a meaningful response to climate change through our own power, through our own government, um, then it would be copied by other people. Yeah, and yeah that's, how, that's how it ripples out, right? You start, you start doing it somewhere, and other people take heart from it. But you know, you bring uh, something up that... Works, other people do it. You yeah. bring something up that's, how it goes. that's but, interesting, you know, I, though. Hang on, Charles. Oh. Charles, Hello. Charles, 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 hang on. Yeah. When, they're call, when they call in, they think that... Uh, it, like it's a call-in show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Hardly. Okay. No, I, I you bring up something that's interesting, though. still talking. You, you bring up something interesting. You talk about all this uh, this local activity that we can get involved in to make uh, to make local changes. And, uh, it, you know, one of the things I was thinking about is why aren't people taking this more seriously? Uh, mm-hmm. What what is it that uh, people can just forget about? Yeah, are you still there, Charles? Charles? Nope. Mm. Going off the air. Call back, won't you? Um. Well, you know, uh, one of the problems also is the disinformation that's um, put out into the world, and um, scientists get hired to create things that sound scientific and factual mm. that give the answer that the corporation wants presented. Sure. And um, the, um, it makes it really hard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so what was your question again? <laughs> My question was why, uh, <laughs> was why aren't people way. taking it more seriously? Oh, wow. Uh, really, uh, it seems like there's certain – this is a subject that's on people's minds, but for many, many, many people uh, – Climate change doesn't even doesn't resonate. matter. Yeah. Uh, it's most the mostly the impact on coastal areas. So we feel it out here, and when it yeah, and the Gulf is feeling it, and Florida is going to feel it very soon. I, yeah, but, but it's going to uh, be interesting but, about that. And what was interesting, in fact, uh, the Guardian, George Monbiot in the Guardian uh, said, you know, that hardly anyone was talking about climate change when they when they were reporting on Hurricane Harvey. Nobody was raising the question. Oh, this is a very intense storm. Is this uh, something to do with climate change? They didn't even ask that question. They just—they're just reporting. You know, they got the guys standing out there in the wind. And <laughs> but, but are you suggesting that uh, after Hurricane Harvey, all of a sudden, Houston, the folks at Houston are going to look at climate change? Uh, they're going to really focus on something like that, or you think that's going to change them? All of a sudden, oh my God, climate change! Look at Harvey. I, I don't know. I one hope so, but they're all going to be very preoccupied well, you know, for a couple of years trying to find a place to live. So you know, it took a long time for the situation to develop, mm-hmm. and in order to reverse it, is going to take a long time. You know, we can't just flip a switch. Yeah, exactly. We it, want the quick fix, and we want the techno fix right now. Yeah, but it's only been. As we say, what two hundred years since we started affecting climate in a in a big way? One hundred and fifty years, certainly. The damn so steam engine on a on a global scale. That's that. No, you can say <laughs> steam. It's fine. Steam engine's <laughs> fine. Um, if the uh, it only took a blip, uh, you know, it was like a flash, and we ch- started changing global climate. We don't see it as that because we have a you know a lifespan of half that if we're lucky. So that's why people don't take it seriously until it happens to them and or until, you know, like our properties are threatened in Marshall. And yeah, but Shelly, you said uh, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a long time. The apocalyptic part of me said, we don't have a long time. Hmm. Yeah, right. So if that's the case, if it's going to take a long time, uh, you know, what does that mean? You mean we personally, as human beings, don't have a long time? Well, the Earth doesn't or you, care. Or are you saying that uh, the species doesn't have? What, what do you mean by we? Well, I, the, the human beings are, are what we focus on. Uh, mm. is sadly, uh, 
uh, it's sorry to say that so many other uh, animals, etc., on the planet are uh, dying off. Hmm. And uh, I don't know how many a day, but many. And uh, uh, we're most worried about ourselves. But man, live in a world without without other primates. It's mm-hmm. it really is saddening. Other insects, other yeah, oh no, everything. insects don't count. Other than bees, oh, they count other than a bees. lot. Other than bees. <laughs> The um, well, I understand that, yes, but uh, but so why wouldn't that be an impetus for a lot of people? I mean, there are a lot of people who are concerned about it and trying to do what they can. But what can you do? Give, give us a call four one five six six three eight four nine two. What can we do? If it is uh, mostly carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, what can we do? Uh, is the manufacture of an electric car any less of a carbon footprint than a uh, than a Jag? Uh, that's I mean, a that's, that's one of uh, Bernie Stephan, one of the original co-hosts on this show. He says everyone says these are green technologies, but how are you how are you making these the all these turbines and and solar panels you're That's digging true. up stuff with with diesel machinery in some ex-colonial nightmare of a of a pit that they're <laughs> that they're creating yeah, and people have studied the environmental uh, uh impact of just making the automobile exactly and, yeah. and we're defer you know okay so you don't have a uh uh it's not on the road that you're that you're polluting, but you're def- just deferring the uh, mm. you're trans you're trans deferring it over to a a, a power plant somewhere. And mm. Unless it's unless we convert to uh, renewable energy, well, that's it's the same thing. Okay, and uh, that's what the original climate denier, climate change deniers, were fighting because they were mostly you know encouraged by the coke industries and by. By coal and by uh, by oil companies and chemical companies don't don't change anything. We're doing fine. It'll affect the bottom line. And of course, yeah. we all know that the market affects uh, everything that happens in this country and around Western civilization, at least. Because if the investors start to lose money, then they'll get all very upset. And it is the right. job of corporate. Their only responsibility is to make money for their investors. And grow. Maybe that should change. And grow. Yeah. Well, and and one of the ways we have power as individuals is how we spend our money. Right. You know. um, Of course. But what do you spend it on? What would you buy that would change things? Organics takes uh, some of the pesticides out. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, uh, one of the things I've done is – now, this isn't really about climate change, but uh, I tend to shop secondhand stores now for mm-hmm. clothes. I um, I don't go to, yeah. And well, that's a big industry. Like it. it looks like <laughs> it, kidding. thanks, Stephen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, it's the guy who used to have a dress store. You know, right? and, and right. Stephen, you said, you know, well, you're not going to stop driving your car, right? Would you be willing? Well, and then if you get an electric car. Mm-hmm. The simple, Where does that you know, lithium just coming from? Buying the electric car is adding to the problem. <laughs> of course. Uh, we're so it we're is, stuck. We are, we're <laughs> really stuck. No, it's it is a challenge. Considering that forty uh, percent of the uh, uh, Europe, United States, and uh, now China, really, if we can change those three uh, areas, uh, well, we are the problem, uh, China. Uh, hmm. And yet, you know, looking for some bright spot. Uh, Germany is is rapidly uh, getting out of the fossil fuel business. Yeah, yeah. What are they? Are almost half or more so uh, renewable India. energy? So is India. I think. I think they're on a track to uh, use renewables instead of uh, oil. You know, pretty fast. Again, and by the way, let me just add that there are two nuclear plants near Miami. Just in case you wonder. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Paul. <laughs> um, let me just. Oh, I have to do the the mid hour. This is KWMR ninety point five FM in Point Reyes Station, eighty nine point nine in Bolinas, ninety two point three in the San Geronimo Valley. Streaming live on KWMR dot org, and we'd like to thank underwriters again. Programming brought to you by. The Bellinas Hearsay News, serving the Bellinas community since 1974. Information at 415 868 
during office and publishing hours, 9 a.m. to 12 noon on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The Bolinas Hearsay News is available at most downtown Bolinas businesses. And support is also provided by Coastal Health Alliance, offering comprehensive family medicine and dental services and the only podiatrist in West Marin. With health centers in Point Reyes, Bolinas, and Stinson Beach, Coastal Health welcomes patients with Medicare, Medi-Cal, private insurance, including Kaiser, and no insurance. Appointments and general information at 415-663-8666 or coastalhealth.net. And KWMR is supported by our listener members, of course, and by the Lucid Art Foundation, a nonprofit in Inverness that explores consciousness through art, engages in a variety of activities, including annual seminars for professional artists, an artist resi- residency program, publications, exhibitions, and collection management. More information and sign ups at their website, lucidart.org, or 415. 415- Six six nine seven five eight five. So we're talking about climate change today. Uh, give us a call four one five six six three eight four nine two. And Charles, call back on eight three one seven, please. <laughs> I didn't mean to cut you off permanently. It was just yeah. It'd be great to hear from people who have more ideas about yeah. how we as individuals can make a difference mm. and. Um, uh, carbon dioxide, latest measurement in July 2017, 406.69 parts per million. Seems to me we were talking about 350 not long ago. Uh, Bill McKibben's 350.org, wasn't it? I 360.org? Think, you know, I'm going to come up with uh, sort of off the So wall. we're already beyond that, which is the no re- point of no return, I believe. That's what. I, I want to just come up with something a little off the wall here is you know, in some sense, we have a responsibility to continue our behavior the way it is because uh, the, huh? Im- the implications <laughs> – no, seriously. Yeah, very well. It's a game of mu- – we're playing musical chairs. Mm-hmm. The implications of a society that does not continue to grow uh, uh, are vast in terms of labor. What do people do for a living? Right now they're, they're – Majority of our labor is into making the very things that that uh, we're complaining about. We're saying that are contributing to the envir- deg- environmental degradation. When people get smart, like Shelley saying, and they start deciding with what they buy, well, right. there's a lot of pe- there's a there's going to be a lot of people it's, out of work. Yeah, the impact, mm-hmm. you know, the fallout of all of these changes is go. It, it it's going to be. Major, <laughs> a major that's right. adjustment. That's right. Um, but but I and I think that's that's one of the things that slows people down. Oh, we can't do that because you know. But it, it's sort of we just have to roll up our sleeves, I think, and and just try. Hmm. Tell that to the guy least. that has to pay his rent every month. Yeah, exactly. So if you so, if you get rid of one, so let's say you know we we do away with the fossil fuel industry, couldn't it be replaced? By sustainable energy it, and, and provide but can jobs. It be, can it be? Would it be in the same places? Would it be in the hills of Virginia, for example? Would it be in? Uh, I don't know. No, it would all be in Arizona, and that comes with uh, with big problems too. Because where does the water come, for example, for Phoenix? <laughs> where does where you know if you're going to build? huge sun collector installations that would be in the deserts and how what who's gonna you can't have everyone move to the deserts from the forests from the hills uh population growth big problem i mean as the economy grows people get more comfortable they have more children and uh but fertility rates are dropping thanks to the chemicals that we're pumping into the atmosphere. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, there is a point to be made. You know, we, may, we make such a mess of things just doing what we do as human beings. Uh, look what we're doing right now. If climate change is being caused by humans, mostly, let's uh, call in, won't you, if you want to say that's wrong. Four one five six six three eight four nine two. But, you, you know, you could say, who are we to decide 
how to fix this because we make a mess of everything. Look at what oh, <laughs> we got ourselves in this situation. Absolutely right. And who's going to get us out of it? Well, us? I don't know. Are we capable of doing that as humans? You know, we don't have to do anything. <laughs> I think what we're talking about is not doing. Not doing, yes. Don't have more car driving children. Well, there you go. If you're just talking about automobiles, the vast industry that employs hundreds of thousands of people making the very things that are destroying our planet. Right. And if we shut them down, all those people are out of work. They're all out of work, and their their landlord still wants the rent. What do we do with that? They still need money to universal basic keep their income. Tank full. Paying people not to work. But that money has to come from people that are making the money. Well. Yes, or it has to, yes, it has to come from taxes. Yes, it's it's so from complex. People who are making money. We want well, to just throw up our hands. Money? Exactly. How they're, they're making the money by things that are, in, in some sense, destroying the environment. It's yeah. a, it is a, it, I, it's a circular. Yes, we're in we're in deep trouble. Yes. <laughs> I deny it all. I say we're on top of the world. Does anybody want to contradict me? The world will have to change around us, uh, and as, as it is. And uh, there, was a lovely, uh, there was a lovely map of the world uh, that showed what the world could be like if there were four degree centigrade rise, which were, you know, we're up to, what, one degree already? Point. Point eight. Point, point eight. Yeah, almost one. Um, after four degrees, they're saying uh, Europe, for example, will be in uninhabitable. It'll just be dry, and, and most of the U.S. Uh, there will be cities. You know, they they describe them as uh, concentrated cities. So all the population moves to these central places, and then they're farming around. So like the western point of uh, Antarctica would be cities and agriculture and the and the arctic would be cities and agriculture up there and the rest that middle band the uh, the desert zone would be where we're all currently living wow can we adapt to that of course we can <laughs> we've done it before uh you know lived through an ice age our species or the mm. ones that gave rise to us. Maybe we can evolve to have scales. I think we can probably evolve to do anything we want. G if we have enough time. Maybe we wouldn't have enough time because it's changing so quickly. Mm. Maybe we're just doomed. Ah. Oh. So in that case, we go back to pro-degradation, the most uh, famous wall That's arch right. of all in West Rin. Use it all up now. Just keep using, in fact, increase your usage and your consumption and uh, just get it over and done with because the longer we're here, the more we're going to mess everything up and the more species we're going to kill. So the sooner the humans are out of the equation, the better. So the just do better. more consumption right now. Keep doing it and uh, flush twice. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll be out of here in like three generations and the, the, the surviving species will be much happier. Well, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Man. That wasn't a big hit when we put it on the well, Grandy building, you know, I have to say. But. I mean, climate change <laughs> is just one part of what we're up against right now. Yeah. And and it's a very complex part. Hmm. And and you start to feel the weight of all of that. And hmm. like, oh, okay, I'm just going to stick my head back in the sand and, hmm. you know, hope it's all okay. Uh, because it, it's just – it's too much to try and figure out how to – what what is it's, possible to do. It's like a lot of – it's like just trying to influence the federal government. It all seems too big for one person to do. And it's not about one person, of course. It's about concerted effort. And I guess in our case, it would that would have to come from our central government saying this is what we have to do now. And unfortunately, that's probably not going to happen. It is hard when we all have, you know, to work, make livings. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we be activists? You know, how mm -hmm. can we be at those meetings all the time and mm -hmm. uh, at all those marches? And it's, you know, and then, you know, there's the good old guilt and shaming again that, that comes up and um, things that are OK to talk about and things that, you know, aren't OK to talk about. And it's. 
Ugh, it's a hard well, there's time. A, right there's now. a dearth of information on it on mainstream news, for example. I thought I thought that was a good point that he made that nobody was talking about climate change as the hurricane was happening. You know, and it was, it's like the what just happened with uh, with Trump, just going with the first offer that the Democrats made at the White House while uh, while his uh, his henchmen are all sitting around him. Totally shocked that he caved in at the first offer and didn't, you know, he was supposed to be the great negotiator. That was his big power as a successful businessman, uh, was that he would uh, negotiate great deals. But instead, uh, he he went with uh, what Pelosi and uh, what's his name, Schumer, came up with and said, okay, yeah. Turned we'll just out go that, with that was a great Turned deal. Out. And they, because, and the Republicans were really angry because uh, Ryan especially wanted to make Hurricane Irma. He didn't want the, uh, he didn't want the suffering of the people of Houston to be a politicized variety, as if it weren't already, uh, uh, as part of uh, trying to raise the debt ceiling and all this sort of stuff. Instead of that, Trump just said, okay, raise the debt ceiling, but only for, uh, what, 18 months? Well, you know, he always uh, uh, campaigned and said, I love debt. I mean, he never, I don't know if you recall that, but he used to broadcast it. I love debt, he says. Of course, he's in tremendous debt. Yes. <laughs> well, why don't we just borrow it from uh, where he borrows it from, the oligarchs? Well, he's, he goes bankrupt on a regular basis, so, you know, we can go bankrupt too. So that, that's one of the, the questions is, can we afford to keep bailing people out? If a city gets destroyed by a hurricane, do you just leave the city? You know, going back, don't try to rebuild it in a place where hurricanes are going to happen. Can we just move on or from there? Or floods? Or floods? Yeah. Move and away then where from will the they coast? Go? Well, exactly. Where do they go? They go to to our neighborhood. Sure, <laughs> we'd welcome Texans here, of course. <laughs> well, you know, I just want to get back to this article: uh, uh, global warming's terrifying new math. And uh, he writes that much of the profits stem from a single historical accident. Alone among business, the fossil fuel industry is allowed to dump its main waste, carbon dioxide, for free. Mm -hmm. All right. That Into the commons of the atmosphere. For free. Yes. Yeah, right. So if we were to charge them for dumping, then the consumer would end up paying for that, right? Yeah. And yeah. Gas would be more expensive and we wouldn't be able to drive and we'd all be screaming. I have to drive. Well, maybe the solution is these large trucks because I know a friend of Max's who has, I don't know why, about a truck so large. He said, well, <laughs> he's got to think about whether he's going to drive out here or not because it's too so expensive. All right. So maybe we should get everybody to buy large trucks. And just stay where they are. And stay where they are because well, it's too so expensive. <laughs> that's one of Charles's great points is that, uh, you know, people are always flying around. Flying is the worst thing you can do for global warming. And uh, people are always flying off from here and there doing, you know, visiting the grandkids. In, I'm going to uh, do a little of that myself in a few weeks. Visiting the grandkids in Rhode Island, you know, yep. flying across the world. Anyway, we're not going to stop doing that, so we're basically doomed. So uh, get used to, color, to climate change, I guess. Uh, uh, Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh, and let's not forget that Rush Limbaugh is listened to by what? How, what percentage of the population? At least 50. My grandma used to love it. Yeah. He says uh, the hurricane warming, warnings about Irma are a scheme, scheme to benefit retailers, the media, and the climate change what? agenda. <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, the a hurricane is a scheme? When a hurricane pops up, uh, they create the, the media, he call, what does he call them? The drive-by media, whatever that means, calls them, uh, they create panic. Uh, you have an abundance of people in meteorological uh, circles who believe that man-made climate change is real, and they believe that Al Gore is correct when he's written, and he couldn't be more wrong, that climate change is creating more hurricanes and stronger hurricanes. Of course, when Harvey hit, it was the first hurricane that had hit in 12 years. There haven't been more hurricanes, and they're no more dangerous than any others in previous years. But it doesn't matter because the bias is built in. So there's a desire to advance this climate change agenda, and hurricanes are one of the fastest and best ways to do it. So, Oh, so we take advantage. It's an opportunistic op uh, situation for, uh, when the hurricane hits. 
for business and uh, and the media. Media makes more money because people are tuning in more and they sell more advertising, and uh, which is true. And, and then there's um, the whole uh, and of course true in his case as well. <laughs> let's get rid of some more <laughs> illegal not... aliens. Uh, uh, oh yes. Oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I didn't didn't. I, I'm confused. Yeah. Harvey is responsible uh, for it's it's a uh, it's directly uh, in retaliation for all these sexual changes that we're going through uh, it's punishment from God you mean exactly yes exactly uh, for sexual changes is that what well, you yes well you know the the uh, gay agenda it's punishment from God oh it's, you haven't heard that one. no I missed oh, that yes. this time <laughs> no I think they're still saying it uh, yes that's sad isn't it boy um, yes, so we're being punished for our misdeeds. Apparently, Houston was the epicenter of the gay agenda. Who, <laughs> Who knew? knew? <laughs> you know, though, uh, interesting if you look at a map as to how, uh, uh, who would, where, where did blue, uh, who were the blue uh, areas in the country and who were the red? Uh, Houston was blue. All the major uh, metropolitan areas in the country were, uh, were essentially uh, blue voters. And that included Houston. So, uh, did it really? Yes, Houston it did. went blue. Hmm. Yes, it did. You, if you look Good. at a map of Texas, you got that area, and then you then you go to Austin, and the rest of it is just like a sea of red. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's how uh, governors like uh, what's his name get elected. Who? Um, oh, and the governor of Florida, who's who uh, f- two years ago forbade any mention of climate change in any official documents in Florida. That's right. I guess he won't be asking for any uh, federal aid either, will he? <laughs> nah. Oh, dear. Well. Not like the uh, Texans did, you know, the te- what, Ted Cruz, who wouldn't, uh, who decried the uh, money going to Hurricane Sandy because it wasn't in Texas. Why, why would he allow that? And now, of course, he wants it for Texas. Should we now. interpret the fact that we haven't had any calls yet that of general disinterest? Maybe. Give us a call, please. 415-663-8492. We're, uh, we'd love to hear different views, uh, more views, more thoughts on climate change and what, well, you know, what can we do as regular folks to do anything about it? And uh, can we afford to keep bailing out cities that are built in the path of hurricanes and... Uh, floodplains. Uh, floodplains. Um Tornado Alley. We keep rebuilding all these places. Why? Why not just uh, scrap them and say we're done? Okay, the refineries will have to shut down in Houston. Okay. (laughs) Since that is... Thanks for working that out for us. That is, as far as we are being told, uh, a major major, uh, cause of climate change in itself. There's the solution. Yeah. Shut down Let Houston. the city sink. <laughs> mm. Well, because the Gulf of Mexico is going to rise four feet in the next, by 2020. You know, uh, Florida used to be a swamp. If you, mm, boy. If, if you look what's going to happen to Florida with the, with the uh, ocean's rise, it disappears. Yeah. Florida well, yeah, disappears. what about right here where we're living? Well, Marshall's... Uh, Marshall's in the sites, and the coastal California Coastal Commission would prefer that there were no houses over the water in Marshall. They're making it. Uh, they're going to make it very. They're trying to make it very difficult to uh, do anything like raising your house and mm. maybe raising the seawalls to mm-hmm. protect Highway One that goes through Marshall and the sewer system that we got because we didn't want to be red tagged for by the Coastal Commission for poisoning mm-hmm. the bay with leaking septics. Um, they are, shall I go into this? I mean, it's a, it's a long thing. They want to, anyway, they, yeah, yeah. if you've made repairs to your house that constitute more than 50% of the structure, and they want to backdate this to 71, I think it was, <laughs> when, the, when the Coastal Act was signed and they came into being. That's 40, 
45, 46 years ago, 45 years ago, if you've made more than 50% changes since then to the structure... Then what happens? Then you must have a, not just a county permit, you must have a coastal commission permit, which is hugely expensive and can take a long time if someone like EAC across the bay says, oh, we don't want them raising that house or raising that seawall. Uh, it can... It takes thousands of dollars. It takes months. They have to go through hearing after hearing after hearing. So they're they're basically trying to say, oh, and they if you if you do apply for a permit and part of the part of the application for that coastal commission permit is a bond that will cover the demolition and removal of your house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've always been jealous of That's them That's where anyway. the visitor serving comes in. There will be nothing in Marshall except Hog Island will be there, of course. But, uh, uh, and it will be visitor serving because they can get to the rocks. You know, they, they want ac- the, we're all about access to the sandy beaches. Well, there are no sandy beaches in Marshall. It's all rocks. Let me ask you a different question. Just, just <sighs> your guess here. Don't get me started. You did. Well, the, I, I just – it's <laughs> – it just comes to me. I if, think I did it. Give us a call, won't you? Four one five six six three eight four nine two. If you belong to the, if you are in favor of the Coastal Commission, uh, yeah. Let's see. EAC, are you listening? No, probably not. You know, I, I thought. It, let's say uh, somebody proposed that we put uh, uh, wind power in West Marin. Hmm. Uh, you know, big turbines, etc. Mm-hmm. How would how would the uh, local residents feel about that? Right. Uh, is it a uh, NIMBY? Uh, Sure. Uh, would we have the same activism against uh, the wind towers? As far as I recall, uh, and this was several years ago, somebody was talking about putting uh, turbines out here on the coast. And as far as I can recall, the, there wasn't enough wind, constant wind, to justify the expense to do it. Although that was, you know... Now there are probably better turbines, better designs that can cope with that, that can be turned in a smaller wind and still provide the same amount of energy, maybe. Um, but, yeah, remember that big, uh, the big hoo-ha about Nam McAvoy's turbine? The one on the, the Red Ranch. Hill going down the other, the McAvoy Ranch? Oh. She built one and nobody liked it? I don't she I was, was out of well, it was, there. Well, it was going oh. to be built on the ridge at the back, at, back side of her property, which was right above... My friend's house, the Schlesinger's back there. There's a beautiful Victorian house in the valley behind that ridge, and it was going to be right above his house, and it was going to be much bigger than that turbine that's there. So the noise, the that light thing that happens that the, they're finding out about in the Midwest, these farmers who are who are uh, leasing land to wind turbines because it's you know they get paid a lot of money for these things. Uh, there's this strobing effect that happens all the time when you're in the wow. house. <laughs> like this. And it's driving people nuts. So uh, they made enough of a stink that it was able, they were able to reduce the size of it and move it further onto the land. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, a lot of the time you go by there, that thing is not turning. So you've got the noise pollution. Uh, yeah. There, so a huge birds. disruption of the soil. I mean, those you know. Imagine what the foundations are like for something that size. So smaller turbines, maybe. I well, mean, just household turbines. Why not? Nuclear power is looking better and better. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Let's see what happens in Miami. Uh, yeah, two nuclear powers online, and they're waiting until like uh, tomorrow before they start the. Down. They are building uh, nuclear power as clean energy, though, believe it or not. Oh, yes, they are. Well, what George about Mobile. solar? Solar, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it works. What? Yeah, why not? It's uh, it's still expensive, I guess. I mean, there are rebates. There's all kinds of things but uh, that can pay you back some of it. Um, now Elon Musk came out with solar tiles that use solar tiles. roofing tiles. Fabulous. Yeah, really. Every I know. I had that idea a long time ago. and I <laughs> The power wall. How about solar roads? Somebody had an idea for solar oh, right, roads. right, right. Yeah. Pavers. All well, that. But, uh, you know, building more roads or keeping roads just means we're going to keep driving and mm. Well, you know, we'll have to see climate change, whether, whether – uh, we have more hurricanes. Uh, 
uh, more frequently and if uh, the, the uh, effect of them, if they're stronger and stronger than they used to be, continues, uh, uh, that'll be a confirmation. Well, but how long are we going to wait? <laughs> yeah, what needs to happen before? <laughs> how long do we wait before the proof is conclusive? Right. Hmm. Well, we just said the changes, it's going to take a long time, according to Shelley. Uh, again, I, I'm not that optimistic. I'm sorry. Does anybody want to call in and call Please me call in and, and if you're an and optimist opt- about, the, uh, about climate change, please call in, 415-663-8492. Uh, how was your, uh, your hot Labor Day weekend? I mean, that was cooking. <sighs> Maybe yeah. that's nothing to do with climate change, uh, but uh, it certainly provoked the thought to talk about this today. Right, I, right. I, I, there was an article where they took 122 of uh, Trump's tweets on the climate, and uh, he, he had two, they really fell into two categories. One was this business of changing the name from global warming to climate change. Uh, that was a big one, mm. and uh, I'm, uh, numerous tweets about that. And the other one was, uh, gee, Look at it out there, <laughs> this huge <laughs> storm. And right. they talk about climate. So we could use some global warming, right? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, hey, and the, the guy, who, the congressman who brought a snowball into the House of Congress, you know, hey, call this, climate, <laughs> call this global warming. <laughs> yeah, ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, we're doomed. Oh, oh well, just in time. We have, uh, <laughs> we have one caller and we have about 30 seconds. So. Okay. Hi. Hi. This is Anne from Dogtown. Hi, Anne from Dogtown. I am actually optimistic because of the fact of radio shows like yours. <laughs> Yay. Yay! Thank you. Are actually talking about it now and brainstorming ideas. and So I think that's a positive thing. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. That's lovely. Yeah. Well, have a lovely warm day out there. Actually, it's very cool and nice in Dogtown. Is it raining still? It's, it's misty. Oh, yeah, lovely. No, it's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> have a great day, Anne. Thank Thanks you, for calling. Anne. I appreciate bye. it. Yeah, bye-bye. There. Somebody was listening. <laughs> um, thank you so much, both of you, thank Shelley you. and Stephen. And, and I'm thank Paul. you, Paul. And we'd just like to say uh, KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program and those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, callers.